Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here today to wrap up all the books that I read in the month of April and May. I have not sat down and done like a real wrap up and I really would like to get all of these books back to the library and out of my TBR cart. So I'm going to try my best to be as succinct as possible because there are I think 16 books to talk about. And the first one that I want to talk to you about is Tell Me Everything, the story of a private investigation by Erica Krauss. This book really got me out of a slump and it's the book that really made my reading pick up in the month of April. This book is a memoir of a private investigator and she's mixing kind of her own sexual and, and physical abuse that she faced growing up and her very complicated relationship with her family, especially her mother, when it comes to dealing with her abuser who's still a part of the family and also her investigating a rape case that happened in Colorado. So she pairs up with this lawyer and her job is to interview the women who are going to be a part of this case. And there's also like a very big football quote that is dived into in this book as well. What I really love the most about this book is how vulnerable and raw it was in ways that really like broke my heart and also in times that made me really angry. I had like a physical reaction to this book including like headaches when I would get so angry at Erica Krauss's mother and her actions. There is kind of like aspects of this where it's like an unreliable narrator and she doesn't really explain everything. But I think it's like what she is comfortable explaining and revealing about her own life. This book was really phenomenal really compelling. The next book that I read after that was one that's been on my TBR for a while and finally I got the audiobook and that is Homicide A Year on the Killing Streets. This is by David Simon. This has been a book that I wanted to read since I've finished watching The Wire and a lot of The Wire is based off of what David Simon learned while reporting for this book. You can see how tragic some of these stories were but at the same time there was like this weird humor and like culture that really came through of like how people are in Baltimore. I felt that way when I was watching The Wire as well. I think that the book is a little bit dated for sure. It's a book that was released in 1991 I think and it doesn't have like a, a very good like beginning middle end. It's mostly just like little stories but overall I did enjoy my time with this and I was glad that I finally listened to it. This really got me in the mood and got me ready for the new David Simon show on HBO We Own This City. The next book that I read is Maybe Maybe Marisol Rainey. This is by Erin Entrada Kelly. This is a book for younger middle grade readers so I would recommend this for like ages six through nine maybe. Um, it was really really sweet and I really love the themes and messaging. It's about being brave and having courage. I think it's told in a really quirky way that comes across as very juvenile and sweet and a little kid's real thoughts. Then I read a book that was kind of disappointing and that was Scoundrel. I felt optimistic when I started this because of how the author introduces the text and really talks about how true crime has changed over time and how right now we focus so much more on the victims and also on how societal situations affect crimes and what crimes get looked into and and tried but then the author really went like the other way and really fails to live up to her introduction of what true crime is hopefully moving into this book looks into a killer who was tried and convicted and then while he was in prison he became friends with some people who were kind of well connected in society Society, especially in like political circles and legal circles. Really developing these friendships with people who had power helped him appeal his case. He got out of prison. He became like a best-selling author. He was like on TV and um, he kind of remade himself after this crime that he committed and like his charm quote-unquote is what did that. It's really focusing on his life and to me that is what really turned me off is how much we focused on his life, his upbringing. When things went sour once again he committed another crime and like went to prison again. I just felt really gross reading this and I, I felt like I did not need to know about this man's life. It was a book that didn't need to be written in my opinion. I gave it two stars and I don't really recommend it. After that I read another book that I thought was pretty good but I don't think it's like the best book I've read so far when it comes to startup culture. This is The Cult of We, We Work, Adam Newman, and The Great Startup Delusion by Elliot Brown and Maureen Farrow. This book focuses on WeWork, the rise of WeWork, and also Adam Newman and how he started in the scene. I found fascinating how he was like involved in like baby clothes and like baby accessories before he got into WeWork and also like where he came from. He's from Israel so he has kind of like a different um, outlook and kind of like 
like a different upbringing than a lot of the startup bros that I've read about so far. The delusion of this company definitely comes through in this book, especially like the couple because his wife is really involved in the company as well and like how they view the world and want to change the world. Like they have very particular views about how children should be raised and like um, have particular views about like medicine and schooling and things like that. A little bit too repetitive and a little bit too tedious and like you didn't see the valuation of the company and you didn't see like the the train wreck of the company until about 75 percent of the way through to the book it's a longer book as well it's almost it's yeah it's over 400 pages and so you only really get like less than 100 pages of like the beginning of the end of this company and i wish we would have focused way more on that and kind of like all of the accusations that people had against this company so i enjoyed it but i didn't love it i gave it three stars after that i read another book by aaron and trotta kelly that's those kids from fawn creek this really cemented my view of aaron and trotta kelly as a really great author for big social dynamics and like social dramas in middle grade books. If you love to see how relationships develop and how kids change over time in, in circles, I think this is exactly up your alley. If you've read any of her books, you can kind of expect similar themes and similar like pacing in the moodiness of some of the kids as well and their like self discoveries. I loved kind of like the reveal and the way that the main character in this book um, changes the lives of all of those people around her. After that I read eager dreams this book i thought was only about a singular story when i first started it but it's not it's multiple essays about different things that john krakauer has seen and heard about reporting that he's done but also like his own hiking treks some stories in this were definitely better than others. I think like many essay collections, sometimes they don't all get there. But there were some essays that I really enjoyed in this. One that I really enjoyed is where um, they tried to find out what mountain was taller, K2 or Everest, and how mountains are measured. That was pretty interesting. I also like one about climbing Mount McKinley, which is like a really spooky essay. And then finally, there's a final essay about climbing Devil's Thumb that was also really good. Uneven and not completely like balanced, but still worth my time. And if you like John Cracker, I think it's it's worth picking up. After that I read a book that I don't have and that's Ancestor Trouble, A Reckoning and A Reconciliation. I was really excited about this book. It didn't live up to my expectations of it. I think that's because the book really gets bogged down in tiny minute details. This is a book about ancestry and like familial DNA and what makes us us but the way that the author really frames all of that is by diving very deeply into research. She explains so much about every subtopic of ancestry that did feel too scholarly written at times and she has a law degree so I feel like that's how her brain works and how she understands the world but it did feel a bit rambling and unfocused at times and I wanted her to focus more on her family story. I relate to her views of why she wanted to write this story. I just don't think that her familial story is very very strong and that's why I didn't love this book and I gave it three stars. After that I finished Nobody's Victim by Carrie Goldberg. This book, very similar to Tell Me Everything, was one that I finished really, really quickly and I couldn't stop listening to it. I did a lot of yard work listening to this book. It comes across very feisty and that's what makes it super compelling for you to want to keep listening to it. Carrie Goldberg is a lawyer who focuses a lot on cases that have to do with um, domestic violence, that have to do with rape, that have to do with stalking, um, and also how that connects with the social media landscape that we are in and the internet. She focuses on different cases that she's worked on and while she was talking about them I definitely was like oh I've heard about this case and I read about it myself in the newspaper. She's working on cases that I find interesting learning about and I just find her very very principled. She's very good at speaking out and I think that that confidence really is portrayed very well in this book. It comes across very well um, and it, it's what really shines in this book. I do agree that sometimes she uses some words that I feel like maybe are not the right terms, um, especially like words like psycho, um, but I, I understand like it's coming from a place of like being really angry about situations. She's also a little bit vulgar and maybe some people won't appreciate that, but that didn't bother me as much. I ended up giving this book four stars. Then I read Seek You, A Journey Through American Loneliness by Kristen Radke. This book is a graphic nonfiction work. It mixes memoir, but it also is general nonfiction. It lays out a lot of ideas about aloneness and loneliness in the United States. It focuses a lot too on like research into the topic and what scientists have gathered over the decades about what 
being lonely is and does to our brains. I found this really introspective and I really enjoyed the perspective of the author and all of the research that she did. It kind of had this like melancholy moody tone to it. Especially if you like graphic nonfiction books that have more ideas and kind of less dialogue between people. I think it's a really compelling look into why being lonely is something that is affecting so many people in the United States um, and also what we can do to combat it. This was a book that I was reading when I read about the shooting in Buffalo that killed 10 people people, um, most of them African Americans, and some of the things that she mentions in here and goes into in here I felt like had so much to do with what I was witnessing in the news and I loved how the colors change between the different parts in the book so they, they kind of change between different color palettes. I really enjoyed this book and I gave it four stars. Then I read a book that I thought was good but not great and that's The Grim Sleeper. I was really excited about this book. This is a book about the serial killer in South Central that they called The Grim Sleeper because he would um, not commit any crimes for extended periods of time and then he would kind of like awaken and kill people again. Most of the people that he killed were sex workers. They were vulnerable women. It's true that police did not investigate as well as they should have. I did enjoy this book and I think that it, it does dive more deeply into the victims than for example Scoundrel does. So I definitely think that this one gave us a picture about the women who were affected and, and killed from the perspective of the families. Overall that's what I like the most about this is learning about those women and their families and what I didn't really love as much about this is the pacing of it and the storytelling of it I thought wasn't fantastic. I also thought that the author Christine Pelisek really inserted herself in ways that were kind of awkward and unnecessary. Like she would talk constantly about how she was a vegetarian or like what kind of car she was driving. I feel like you can insert yourself, put some memoir aspects of it because you're the one like living the story out and like researching it and, and finding these families but I felt like the way that she inserted them in there were a little a bit awkward and it really had no place in the narrative. I think in general too I had watched a documentary about this on HBO. It's a documentary by Nick Broomfield and I liked that documentary more and I felt like it told the story more succinctly than this one did um, though the pros of this one is that it told more of the victim stories than the documentary did. I gave it three stars. The next one is The Maid by Nita Prose and this book kind of took me by surprise how much I ended up enjoying it. Though it wasn't perfect, I gave it three and a half stars. What's really interesting in this book is the main character's uh, narration and her voice. I think that she's very charming and she comes across really well. She's someone that you're like rooting for but that you know has like issues as well and isn't telling the full story. I felt like this was a lot more of a cozy mystery and thriller than I um, thought initially before I started reading it. I thought she was going to be a little bit more cutthroat. I ended up liking that and usually I don't like cozy mysteries. If you've been watching my channel for any amount of time you know that I usually DNF them or like have a really hard time with them and I I think this has been the most successful one so far. It mostly focuses on the main character trying to discover what it is that happened to this person who is dead in her hotel. I thought that the world was really interesting as well and learning about her grandmother. She's a little bit like socially awkward. Some of the things that she sees or does um, are not things that like the typical person would do but I think that they came across well in this book where I did believe it and I thought that it was like really charming and funny. I did think that this book should have wrapped things up a little bit quicker or should have had a better ending. I didn't love the resolution of it. It was a really fun book that kept me entertained and engaged and a book that I listened to pretty quickly so that's really all I'm asking of thrillers these days. The next book I read is Hellphone by Benji Nate. This is a new graphic novel which was originally posted online but now it has its own paperback release. This is kind of a really quirky weird kind of absurd book that deals with these two main characters and their there's like this phone that keeps appearing and keeps ringing and they keep telling them when they answer the phone to go to these crime scenes and they're trying to figure out this mystery of what happened. It's really silly and a bit weird but the kind of humor that I like in these kinds of stories there's kind of like a dark humor to them. I really enjoyed the main characters in this first volume and I'm excited to check out volume two when it comes out. Then I read Sandy Hook, An American Tragedy and the Battle for Truth by Elizabeth Williamson. She is a New York Times reporter that has been focusing on the Sandy Hook story mostly when all of the stuff uh, where they were suing Alex Jones started coming about and that's really what she focuses on this book is what has happened with the conspiracy theorists that have flipped a script on what this 
story is about and um, have truly affected the family members of the people that were killed at Sandy Hook and the children that were killed there. A few of the families that she really focuses on, their fight against people like Alex Jones and all those other people who proliferate on the internet and believe that Sandy Hook was a hoax um, and that spread misinformation about it. A few families that I found really really inspiring and I I just learned so much about like what they have gone through. Like I knew about Alex Jones being deplatformed and I knew about like you know them suing the rifle companies and, and things like that but I didn't quite know about like the different charities and organizations that they have come up with to battle this kind of stuff and particularly there's one parent Lenny Posner who's the father of Noah Posner and he created this uh, organization that fights these trolls and people who are spreading bad information online through something called the Honor Network. At first they were just focusing on Sandy Hook so like contacting Facebook and Twitter and all these different places on the internet um, to get them to take stuff down that was incorrect um, about their son's death. Now it focuses helping people who are facing trolls, gross people online who are trying to make people believe different things than the truth. There are also stories in here about how the families have been like stalked and harassed over time that I didn't know the extent of it and um, it's like really tragic to me and really really upsetting that you know many many years on these families cannot live their lives as much as they can as grieving parents without the reminder of their children's deaths um, by horrible people who are literally finding them on the street and like stalking their houses and like finding them. I really enjoyed learning about Robbie Parker, I enjoyed learning about Neil Heslin and um, definitely Lenny Posner and Veronique De La Rosa. I do feel like this book focused a little bit too much maybe on Alex Jones and like his rise and how he got involved. It also focuses a lot on the 2016 election and like rehashing a lot of things that I feel like I know and I feel like we all know. I understand like what she's trying to get at that it is all like a through line and it all is connected um, and the rise of Trump and how Alex Jones like was propagating Trump on his show but in general this was a really great book and one that I do recommend. It's a really sad book of course and a book that's heavy but a book that I think taught me a lot especially how successful these parents have been fighting these conspiracy theorists online. The main thing that I got about conspiracy theorists in this is that um, they don't see the victim, they see a threat to their worldview and that's kind of like how I'm viewing conspiracy theorists now. Um, yeah this inspired me to want to read other books about conspiracy theories so we'll see about that. The book I read after that was The Other Dr. Gilmer, Two Men, A Murder and An Unlikely Fight for Justice by Benjamin Gilmer. This is a book about Benjamin Gilmer. He is a doctor who takes over this rural practice in North Carolina from a doctor who was also named Dr. Gilmer before him. They are not related and he starts learning about this other Dr. Gilmer who's actually been imprisoned for killing his father. How that all happened. At first he is really against meeting him and he's kind of like spooked by it but then he gets Gets to meet Vince Gilmer, the other doctor in prison, and he starts fighting for Dr. Gilmer's release. A lot of the stuff in here is about the medical situation that Vince Gilmer was dealing with when this crime took place, his mental state, how a misdiagnosis and, and not having a proper diagnosis, even when you're a doctor, which is kind of sad, um, has affected the crime that took place. It does not excuse the crime and it does not like completely explain the crime um, but it's a, a factor in the crime that took place. This book was really interesting at first especially like the elements of Benjamin Gilmer not wanting to know this other Dr. Gilmer and then like kind of getting to know him. I think where this book really falters is in the writing. I think the writing is not particularly like memorable. I think it's kind of predictable. I think it's really simple and at times especially towards the end it's very moralistic. He really expounds to you like how you should be feeling Feeling about this um, and how you should be feeling about the state of healthcare in this country and, and mental care in this country. Not that I disagreed with him, I just felt like the way that it came across did come across too much like this is how you should feel and I'm telling you about it. I think also in particular I didn't feel the connection, like I, I believed it and I think that it's genuine. It was more like it happened out of nowhere and I feel like that wasn't really shown to us in the text for, for me to understand their their true friendship and like he's like his legal guardian now. There is a diagnosis towards the end which sort of explains some of it and you do learn a lot about how drugs affect that as well, what medications they should be taking and also you learn about 
rule practice and having your own rule practice and what that is like so yeah i ended up giving this one three stars and then last but not least the last book that i finished i want to talk about is the real riley mays by rachel elliott i like this book i didn't love it i think i just gave it three stars particularly i don't really love the art style it's kind of boxy and like they have very large mouths um i don't know it's just not exactly 100 my cup of tea though it's kind of cute this book was really sweet the main character um riley is really creative and artistic and she's making new friends in her school and she's also like kind of questioning herself and this crush that she has on a woman comedian um and she's asking herself like am i a lesbian or like how do i feel about that she asks questions of adults around her her and I really love the depictions of the adults. There is a gay couple that she talks to as well as her parents. I really enjoyed seeing kind of like the development of the kids at school and how she deals with bullies and things like that and I did think it was funny and I think um, kids will really take away things from this and also see themselves in Riley and how silly how much of a class clown she is at times. I think this is a great book for pride and I don't know if I've read a graphic novel with a character like this who's kind of questioning her identity and I think she's like fifth grade so I really found that interesting and how they discuss that with her how she discusses that with her parents. Can you believe it? That is it. Let me talk to you about two books that I DNF'd. I DNF'd Watergate, A New History by Garrett M. Graff. This was way, way too tedious for me and I was falling asleep listening to the audiobook. It wasn't really living up to what I wanted it to be. I think it's too dense for me and I want a story that's a little bit more succinct and to the point and gets me to know the characters that I need to know right away in a way that I don't confuse them in my head. Um, definitely, I was confusing things in this book. So I'm I'm gonna return it to the library it just wasn't right for me but i definitely do still want to read a book about watergate still keeping my eye on something that is a little bit more up my alley when it comes to that and then the last book that i dnf was shelter by young yun which is really really sad because i loved her book oh beautiful i was really devastated by how hard this was for me to read that's kind of also weird to me because the first few chapters i was really into there's like a crime that happens with the main character's parents it's also about his identity and how he sees himself and how he's dealing with financial insecurity that he's facing and his family is facing but then i thought that this book really was not going anywhere and i didn't really care about hearing the main character's point of you sad about it because i really wanted to love young yun's other book because i loved oh beautiful so much so that is it for all the books that i read in april and may if you read any of these let me know down below or if you want to read any of these also let me know down below if you want to leave a little emoji of how you're feeling today you can also do that in the comments and i will see you in my next video bye bye